Bernie Sanders has won Colorado. He literally won the state of Colorado way after he dropped out, way after everything that's happened, which is, you know, it, it's good. Colorado has, as many of you know, gone heavily for Bernie Sanders in 2016 and in 2020, obviously, as well. Now, this is why we talk about election integrity, because election integrity is at the core of all the things we want to accomplish. We want Medicare for all, Green New Deal. We want Assange to be pardoned. We want all of these things, but we cannot get those things if our votes don't count. We saw what happened in Kentucky. We went over that on Wednesday. And even in Colorado, the way the math works in our election system, the way these things happen, just doesn't make any sense. So Bernie Sanders officially won the primary by over 12 percent. Somehow he ends up being with, with only 24 delegates while Joe Biden ends up with 26 delegates. And this person named Remstar asks, are we going to let them get away with this? And the answer to that question is, yes, we're going to let them get away with it because they've been getting away with it for years. This has been happening since, I mean, since before we were born. Um, and it's going to continue to happen because not enough people pay attention to it. And as you can see, Bernie Sanders had... <laughs> 352,316 votes, and he ended up with 24 delegates, whereas Joe Biden had 235,091 votes. He ended up with 26 delegates. Um, now, fam, some people might be like, well, maybe that was just a typo, or, yeah. you know, they haven't, they, it must be updated now, right. right? Yeah. Well, I actually went to the site. <clears throat> Here's Politico. Here's the mm -hmm. site. Uh, uh, last updated June 26 at 1254. Let me update it again. Okay, June 26th at 12.54, Bernie Sanders, 37%, 24 delegates, Biden, 26 delegates with 24.7%. Interestingly, Michael Bloomberg came in third, Elizabeth Warren in fourth, and Tulsi Gabbard in fifth, which was interesting because everybody else was below that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, they still have the delegates... Yeah. I this this is my firm belief. I believe Bernie Sanders actually won this primary. Uh but due to fraction magic, due to the machinery that we will talk about with Clint because people think it's some sort of joke. Like it's like a magic trick. I don't even like the name fraction magic because it it implies that it's some sort of like trick. It's actually really easy. If you have the source code you can go and, and change the numbers, pretty much switch them. And it's a threshold so small that it makes people, people don't question it. Like if the threshold is too large, then obviously it's gonna come into question. But if it's done in a way, and it's all it is is a program, it's a computer program. And that's, you know, that's, that that's what I believe happened in um, New Hampshire. Because even with New Hampshire, Bernie Sanders should have won that handedly. Michigan, Texas, California. I mean, even with him winning California, th those numbers were off. And anyway, so this is just, again, I don't know how this is. I don't know how this works. If anybody knows how he could possibly have less delegates, maybe there's a weighted thing that goes on. I know that happened in Iowa where it was weighted different. Rural counties were weighted it could have just been political, though, because what I'm seeing on Google when I see Colorado results yeah. is that uh, they have 25 delegates for Bernie and then Joe Biden has 18. Yeah. I mean, it could have just been political. But then again, that just drives me insane. Politico is one of the most respected. Supposedly leftists, right? Supposedly leftist, but it's really it's liberal more than anything. But it's one of the most respected outlets when it comes to politics, when it comes to elections. They're getting paid the big bucks to do journalism, to, to do research. Why does it vary depending on which outlet you go? Why? Why is it? Why does the mainstream media trick you into because people are going to see this and be like, OK, Joe Biden. Like, it it doesn't matter at this point, right? It doesn't matter. Bernie Sanders is out of the race. Joe Biden is the present, is the nominee now. He's going to accept it at the convention, um, which we're going to talk about in a minute. 
But again, it shouldn't vary. That's that's the whole point. We should all have control over those numbers, those tabulations. We should have access to it completely. The public needs to be aware of what the actual numbers are. And it's it I'm talking about it now because it just proves that even if even if Bernie Sanders wins, the image even if he was winning, the imagery that went out there, even when he was winning, was like, oh, it's a fluke. Oh, it's it's this. Oh, it's that. They frame it however they want. Fam, uh, now I'll go to uh, the New York Times, and it also has this exact same thing. It's 24 delegates for Bernie, 26 for Biden. Right. So somebody put up a tweet the other day where it was like, do you guys all know that the majority of the media outlets get all their information, all their numbers, especially related to elections from the AP, from the Associated Press. That's like the the, the one uh, center that gets it. The Associated Press has 25 and 18, I believe. But the they are the ones that have like get the majority of the information and then it goes everywhere else for news in general. So again, we have we don't have like free media. We have us the independent media that don't even, you know, get considered the same way and regarded as CNN and the New York Times and the AP. But then you have all of these folks that pretty much are the same propaganda for the establishment. So um, it is a state of authoritarianism. I, I agree with what Howie was saying. I mean, fascism, we're on our way. We're well on our way. I mean, we have fascist people. They just haven't been able to implement full-on fascism here. But we're on our way. Um, okay. Anything else you want to say about that? Nope. It's just ridiculous. And, yeah. uh, fuck, I mean, I don't know. I, if, if looking at this doesn't tell you that there's not democracy in our nation, then, like, I don't know what will... Uh, and then, you know, if you see that, then it's like, all right, well, what do I do, right, mm-hmm. to fix this? Because we can't vote now, so what's the next option? Right. If you can't vote, if your voice is, especially when you're telling the, the young generations to vote, like, it matters. <laughs> but then, and then they go vote, and then they have to wait eight hours, and, and you know, what, Ariana Grande has to send people pizza. Or she sent food trucks and stuff because they're waiting there for hours because there's only one polling center in the most populous city of Louisville, Kentucky. Like, what do you want people to do? Like, what, what, what you're telling them to vote while showing them that you don't give a damn about their vote. That's the hypocrisy of this culture. And that is why young people go on the Internet and look at funny videos, because what else are they going to do when the world is is uh it's fucked so to speak i mean for lack of a better word johnny i'm gonna add uh, Mel- marion williamson's response to uh bernie because the next topic we're going to talk about is bernie sanders somehow thinking that um there it is bernie sanders somehow thinking that 10 percent is enough of a military budget cut to for i mean 10 percent just just for for comparison yesterday i had on holly hawkins and he was talking about cutting the military by 70 percent i mean that that let's be realistic right they're not they're not going to allow it even 10 percent where we live right now we have no power right so here's bernie let's listen to what he says He says, um, let me just read this. He says, why do we spend more on the military than the next 11 nations combined? I have a better idea. Cut Pentagon spending by 10 percent and invest it in the fight to end homelessness, hunger and poverty in the richest country on Earth. I agree with everything he said. The percentage needs to be higher. Let's see what he says. Well, that's for only for the Pentagon, right? So maybe he I think I I saw another tweet where he said to cut the defense more. Yeah. Functional health care system or addressing the grotesque levels of income and wealth inequality in our country. Now is the time for change, real change. And when we talk about real change, it is incredible to me 
the degree to which Congress continues to ignore our bloated $740 billion defense budget, which has gone up by over $100 billion since Trump has been in office. Year after year, Democrats and Republicans who disagree on almost everything come together with minimal debate to support an exploding Pentagon budget, which is now higher than the next 11 countries combined. Now higher than the next 11 countries combined, and which represents more than half of our discretionary spending. Incredibly, after adjusting for inflation, we are now spending more on the military than we did during the height of the Cold War, when we faced a major adversary in the Soviet Union, or during the wars in Vietnam and Korea. This extraordinary level of military spending comes at a time when the Department of Defense is the only agency of our federal government that has not been able to pass an independent audit when defense contractors are making enormous profits while paying their CEOs exorbitant compensation packages and when the so-called war on terror will end up costing us some $6 trillion. I believe that this is a moment in history where it would be a very good idea. Okay, so um, here's the thing with Bernie. Bernie is a guy that, and the reason I think he said 10% is because he wants it to pass. Because he's, he's very realistic and aware of what the state we're in. In that sense, like, he doesn't think anything more will pass. Um, but here's the thing. If we ask for a little bit, they usually push back with even less. So I think we should aim bigger. And I, and I get where he's coming from. But I, I mean, just look at how much money we spent. He even said we combined more than the next 11 countries combined. That is disgusting. If we don't demand something like cut it by 40%, 50%, we're not going to get anywhere near any, anything. We this is the thing we have no power he's just trying to work with what he has this is why i don't think the power is going to come from the electorate it's just not i i just don't believe that um marion williamson also said why only 10 percent um because it just seems like a joke when when he's talking about how much money we have spent already i mean we're talking about trillions of dollars that we spend on the military and we also fund israel and saudi arabia by the way so we're talking about that much and we're talking about what the military industrial complex encompasses it encompasses everything within it so you're talking about equipment um the people that you're sending out there the uh in every single country you have to take that into account you have to take into account every little thing it's it's a very bloated military budget yeah, it's so um again i i see where he's coming from but it's just not it's not enough anymore we can't be asking for for scraps anymore i think i think if you're gonna ask for scraps you're gonna get nothing so um also did you see jen parliament in the comments saying start at 60 percent and negotiate from there yeah yeah and John Parliament, of course, is somebody that sh she's still running against Debbie Wasserman Schultz. So you guys should check her out in Florida. Another important race that I would love to unseat. 